Now, I appreciate those of you who have stayed today to meet. Meet on a Monday. Um, certainly, our preference is to be able to do this tomorrow. We're knowing the nature of our tracks with some off tomorrow. This was the only opportunity for those of you who are on lead track who have returned today to have an opportunity to speak to as many of you at the same time to all three tracks. So I do appreciate it very much. It was probably, what, September, no, October? Late October, early November, when I last was here speaking with many of you in this very same room. Speaking to you about Superintendent Cortinas's decision to place Huntington Park High School back on the public school choice list, not under 2.0, but we what evolved into 2.5. And then we know that um, on April 12th, Superintendent Cortinas made a recommendation to the Board of Education after review by committees and a lot of hard work by many of you who are sitting in this room who submitted applications. The superintendent's recommendation was not approved by the board. And on April 12th, the board indicated to Superintendent Daisy that he was to come back within 45 days with a plan that would be more rigorous, more aggressive, would be more inclusive of parental engagement and that would have some heightened accountabilities. Many of you were the first to express that 45 days at a traditional calendar school is still extremely ambitious, but possibly more doable. But as always, as we've experienced here at Huntington Park High School and in our other year-round schools for decades now, on a year-round calendar, you have no time to wait. And certainly 45 days is a very difficult timeline to put in, to then put into place for July 5th the plans that you need to for the new school year. So my urgency and our urgency, because I'm joined with members of our local district staff, I know Nati Rocha, our principal leader, and members from Human Resources staff from Human Resources, Tom Steckel, Debbie Ignagni, our Deputy Chief Human Resource Officer, and our personnel specialist also, Tim Faulkner, have joined us to address some questions. Our urgency today is to come back to you because effective this Thursday online will be a board report that Superintendent Daisy is submitting to the board for their consideration the following Tuesday, May 10th. And the board report, as it has been finalized, has a few, I'm going to share with you the salient points of it, because I don't want you to be caught by surprise hearing it from anyone else or hearing it or reading it online. It does call for the following effective the 2011-12 school year. Number one, it calls for taking the strongest elements from the application of the network of 21st century schools, namely the implementation of the six small schools that would be spread over A-track and C-track, effective the new school year, a collapse of the 13 small learning communities that have been in place, the existing SLCs, collapse to five SLCs, four which would be placed on B-track, one on A track, that is VAPA. And the School of Social Justice being one of the six small schools remaining on A track. Labor Academy already as a pilot remaining on its current schedule. So it calls for the implementation of the strongest elements from the application of the network of 21st century schools. Heightened accountability aligned with the superintendent's accountability meter, which was emailed to you a few weeks back, looking at ongoing um, benchmarks, which are to be met, utilizing district's periodic assessments or core K-12 assessments to ensure that in the core areas we're tracking student achievement, we're looking at modifying our instruction based upon students' needs, Looking at the other accountabilities that Superintendent Daisy has listed on the accountability meter, whether 
it be looking at your four co your uh, four year cohort graduation rate, student attendance, staff attendance, reclassification, algebra passing rate. All of those various accountabilities would be looked at as benchmarks to engage in a discussion about any small school success. First year, no 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 autonomies. It, it would be an earned autonomy based upon student results. Everything is driven by student results, just as the superintendent has stated, students first, second, community and parent engagement, and third, success in the classroom. So the accountabilities, aside from the structure of the implementation of the small schools, is a very important feature. The third point is looking at how do we authentically engage parent and community, knowing that we had 58 parent advisory community votes when the community had an opportunity to engage in the voting process at a school with almost 4,000 students or 3,800 students. We know that we're not reaching our parents authentically. And so we will be working with community agencies such as Families and Schools, ABCs, and others, Coffin, that have worked here with parents at Gage Middle School in Middleton, and built, who have built parent capacity for our parents, who we know will be parents if they're not already at Huntington Park, will be another important feature. And the fourth that I know is going to be critical for all staff to know is that effective incorporated in the board report effective 2011-12 will be a reapplication of all staff certificated which includes teaching and administrative staff as well and classified staff effective the 2011-12 school year it's a reapplication in order to be part of an opportunity to transform Huntington Park High School into the school that I know parents have spoken of, that they want to see for their students, that many of you have vocalized in various forums, whether it was during public school choice meetings or at a staff meeting here, of what you know Huntington Park can be for the students in this community. So it is an extremely ambitious task, but it's one in which we find ourselves with, that we feel is going to be doable, given everyone's collective effort to get this done, because our students will be here effective July 5th. Those are the important critical points. So at this point in time, our staff is here to address any questions. I'm available to address any questions. Those are the salient points that are going to be incorporated, that have been incorporated into the board report that the superintendent has submitted for board consideration next Tuesday, May 10th.